sometimes when we do division, they're not going to terminate like these uh, previous examples did. We're going to do division, and it could potentially continue on and on and on. So eventually, we have to round it to some point. Even if we were using a calculator, the calculator can only display so many digits. So it's going to round it off at some point. So it's not an exact value. It's a rounded value. So if we look at this, it says divide 0 0.0453 by 0.98 and round to the nearest thousandth. So we have to know our place values. So I'm going to divide this value by this value. So I know I'm going to have to move some decimals here. And we're going to use long division. So before I do that, I'm going to move the decimals while it's in this form. If I move this decimal one, two spots to the right, what I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So I'm going to move this decimal one, two spots to the right. So now we can see 4.53 divided by 98. This is the exact same value as this right here. So I move my decimals. And now I know my divisor goes out here and my dividend under that division bar. So now the decimal's already gone, and I'm ready to do this long division. So <clears throat> does 98 go into 4? No. Does 98 go into 45? No. Does 98 go into 453? Well, it's pretty close to 100, so I'd say it's going to go in there at least four times. So let's do that multiplication. 4 times 8 is 32. Carry the 3. 4 times 9 is 36, and 3 is 39. And now I can do that subtraction. We're not going to worry about this de decimal because we've already determined where it goes. So it didn't go into 4. It didn't go into 5. But it does go into 453. We find this difference. 3 minus 2 is 1. Oh, I got to borrow here. 15 minus 9 is going to give me 6. And we get 61. But now, <clears throat> there's no more values to bring down. But I know this isn't the end of the division, because I still have a remainder. We're not going to use remainders here. We're going to actually continue the division. So I'm going to add a 0 and bring it down. How many times does 98 go into 610? Well, if I use my estimate, this is pretty close to 100. It's going to go into this 6 times, because it's 610. 6 times 8 is 48. Carry the 4. 6 times 9 is 54. And 4 is 58. And now we can find that difference. 0 minus 8, well, we got to borrow here. 10 minus 8 is 2. I've got to borrow here. 10 minus 8 is 2. And that's all we have. 5 minus 5 is 0. So I have 22. Now, if we recall when it comes to rounding, if we round to the nearest thousands, I'm already there. But in order to round, we have to go to the value to the right. We have to observe the value to the right. So I need to know what this value is before I can round to the nearest thousands. So keep that in mind. So I need to add another 0. I'm going to bring it down. How many times does 98 go into 220? Two times. And if I multiply that out, I'm going to find that the difference, we can do that. But that's as far as I need to go, because now that I know this value, I know how to round to this value. So to round to the thousands, I observe that this is less than 5, so I can round it off. So my solution is approximately, after my rounding, oh, 46 one thousandths. We rounded to the thousands. So this would be the solution to that division. Now, once we've moved the decimal, it's fixed. That's where it's going to be for our answer. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this here. We're asked to evaluate, and we see we have decimals for our values of x and y. Well, if we're asked to find x divided by y and we're asked to evaluate it, we're just going to put these values in. If x is 45, divide, or 0.45, excuse me, or 45 one hundredths, however you want to read it, and y is 5. This value divided by that value. So 0 0.45 is being divided by 5. Dividend divisor. Now, because my divisor doesn't have a decimal, 
I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to move it. It's only when the divisor has a decimal do you have to move it. It is what it is, what it is in this point. So the decimal is already fixed. 5 doesn't go into 0. 5 doesn't go into 4. 5 goes into 45 9 times. And 9 times 5 would be 45. And if we find that difference, we see there's no remainder. So when we divided this, we got 0.09, or 9 one-hundredths. All right, one more example where we'll see uh, division, and we'll also see decimals. Ty is painting a room. The walls have a total area of 546 square feet. If a quart of paint covers 52 square feet, how many quarts of paint should Ty buy? Well, if we look at these numbers, we see, hey, these are nice integers. So there shouldn't be a problem. Well, let's do that division. We have to divide 546 by 52 to determine the number of quarts of paint that Ty needs. 546 divided by 52. Now, there's no decimal, so I'm not going to worry about it. 52 goes into 54 one time. And I find that difference to be 2, bring down the next value. 52 doesn't go into 26. So what do I do at this point? Well, here we have to imagine there is a decimal there. Just because I didn't write it, now I have to introduce that decimal. Because I need more values to bring down if I'm going to continue the division. We're not going to leave it as a remainder. So if this is a 0, I can bring down a 0. How many times is 52? Go into 260. Um, let's see. Let's say 5 times. 5 goes times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 5 is 25, and 1 is 26. Well, look at that. We have no remainder, but we needed that decimal to get this value. Well, with no remainder, if we continued the division, 52 goes into 0, 0 times 0, 0, 0, 0. So we don't need any more zeros. They're just what we call trailing zeros. So how much paint should Ty buy? Ty needs to buy 10 and a half quarts of paint. Always remember your units in your application problems. So this has been. 3.3 on division, part two. Thank you for watching.